Hey, what's up guys? Today we'll be talking about the Galaxy S10e. It's the budget option of the three phones that Samsung released this month. It's priced at $750, right in line with the iPhone XR. Now, it's not exactly a budget phone because if you think back like two, three years ago, flagships were sitting in the $650 to $750 range. So it's more affordable than a $1,000 flagship, but it's still not cheap by any means. So I'm gonna go over the phone, talk about the good and the bad, and whether or not it's worth $750. So let's get started with the build quality. The phone is constructed out of aluminum with glass on the front and back of the device, same as last year and same with pretty much all flagship smartphones nowadays. The only difference is that all of Samsung's previous phones had this coating on the back glass that got super oily and slippery really easily. The back glass on the S10e is way more grippy and resistant to oils. Like their previous phones would be okay for a couple of minutes before it would turn into a stick of butter, but this thing feels really good in hand. They also have this pearl white color that's kind of blue-ish with red reflections. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but this color does an excellent job at hiding fingerprints and oil, so that's a good thing. On the bottom, you'll find the headphone jack, a USB-C charging port, a speaker grill, and on the right is the power button that doubles as a fingerprint sensor. On the top is the SIM tray with micro SD expansion, and the left is your volume and Bixby button. The headphone jack still hasn't died and the included AKG earbuds are pretty good and you get four extra ear tips with different sizes so that's cool to see. The fingerprint sensor and the volume buttons are positioned really high up which makes it kind of awkward to reach. Not really a big fan of that but the fingerprint sensor works great. The only thing is that the power button doesn't have a lot of feedback. It's not clicky like the volume and Bixby buttons. The screen on the S10e is really good. It's one of the best displays on the market right now. It's a 5.8 inch 2280 by 1080 display. It's bright, colors are great, viewing angles are strong and there's no color shift when viewing at an angle. It's got nice thin bezels all around with no notch up at the top, but instead they cut out a circular hole in the display for the camera module. When you're watching two to one video, the camera cuts into the video, but after a while you kind of get used to it just like with notches and then it's not really an issue. I should also mention that it's a flat screen, so it doesn't curve at the sides which makes the E in the name sound kind of misleading, but it does have the edge features in software so you can swipe in from the right and get at your widgets. But yeah, it's an excellent screen, not as good as the S10 and S10 Plus, those are still a little bit better, but this screen is really good. One of the bigger improvements this year are with the speakers. They're louder and they sound way more natural than the S9 and it makes watching videos way more enjoyable which is great because you have one of the best screens available. And by natural sounding, I mean the bass response is much better, so whenever you're listening to vocals, their voices sound less hollow and flat. These are really good speakers, and despite how small the earpiece looks, it actually gets loud enough to match the bottom driver, so the stereo effect is still pretty good. Compared to the iPhone XR, I'd say these get noticeably louder, but the XR has a little bit better bass. The specs and the performance is also top of the line. You're not sacrificing anything there with the S10e. It's running the Snapdragon 855, 6 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of storage at the base model. The 256 gig version also comes with 8 gigs of RAM, but both are fast and good enough for the majority of people. They removed the pressure sensitive home button this year with all of the S10 models, which is unfortunate because I used it a lot, but given the price, I'm not too bummed by it. Wi-Fi performance is also really good. It's able to max out my Wi-Fi and here's the iPhone 10 for comparison. Bit of a weird choice, I know, but it's the only other phone I have right now, but it shows just how fast the Wi-Fi is on the S10e. It's really impressive. They've also refreshed their skin again to what they're now calling One UI, and if you didn't like their old software, you might not like this either. I think I prefer the old one a little bit more, but that's just me. On the back, you'll find the standard and the ultra wide angle lens, which I think is a much better and more useful lens than the telephoto they used to have. The S10 Plus has all three, but the S10e and S10 drop the telephoto, which I'm totally fine with. The image quality is good. It tends to be on the bright side, but that wide angle lens is just awesome. It's great for large subjects like architecture and group photos or if you're in a small space and you want to get everything into one photo. But the thing with flagship cameras now is that if someone sends you a photo they took, it's not like you'd be able to tell which phone it was taken on, right? 
Point is, the Pixel still wins in image quality, but I'm willing to take a small trade-off in the sharpness and dynamic range for that wide-angle lens, and it's already a really good camera, so I've got nothing to complain about. As for Night Sight, there's already an update to the Google camera port to get it working on the S10 lineup, so all in all, great cameras on the S10e. I'll also have the link to the Google camera port in the description if you're interested in that. Inside, there's a 3100mAh battery that gets me around 8 hours of light use, which is pretty standard. For context, the iPhone XS also gets around 8 hours, and the XR runs about 10 hours, but they're all a full day battery and it comes with a fast charging brick, so nothing really to complain about. There's also a new feature called Wireless PowerShare that lets you charge other devices wirelessly through the back. Now, you're not really going to be charging other people's phones with this, that would kind of drain your battery pretty quick. So it's more meant for small accessories like your smartwatch and your wireless earbuds. So for 750 bucks, it's still not a cheap phone, but it's a lot better than a thousand bucks and the hardware you're getting is actually amazing. It's a solid 10 out of 10 product. The only thing I dislike about it is the position of the power and volume buttons. It's a little bit high up, but that's a minor gripe and they pack so many good features, retained the headphone jack and micro SD expansion and they priced it so well that I don't think anyone's beating this anytime soon. So that's the end of this review. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Also consider subscribing for more videos. It helps a lot. I'll see you guys next time.